Hey everybody, welcome back to Flag Slash Fan Day. I know a lot of you guys don't even watch these videos, but it's not about the views. It's about following the same format until we get to the end. Oh! Hope you liked the Tunisia episode. As you know, this is the part where we address the uh, small mistakes in the video or the things that we didn't have time to mention in the video. For one, in the political geography motion graphic, there was a small little glitch in which the train stop labels of Tozur and Gab didn't show up. In the physical geography motion graphic, the longest river, the Majera, actually ends around here, not here. Also, I accidentally used a picture of Morocco musicians instead of Tunisian in the music segment. Sorry. Also, geography Khalil really wanted to be in this video. He wanted to do the famous places section, but it's like I kind of promised Ahmed he could do it because he wasn't going to co-host. So I was like, you can have the segment. So Khalil, I'm sorry you couldn't be in the video, but thank you Khalil for still trying to volunteer. Things we forgot to mention. Tunisia has a huge hammam culture. Now, hammams used to be very popular throughout most of the Islamic world, partially because they have to do the ablution thing before going into a mosque. However, the popularity kind of died down in most of the countries but it's still popular in Tunisia. In fact, during Tunisian weddings, they usually like rent out an entire hammam just for the bride and her friends. Another thing we didn't mention, at one point in Tunisia, they spoke a language called African Romance. Don't have time to get into it, but it was Latin based. At one point, Tunisia had more Italians than French people. So the French put up propaganda posters saying, we need to Frenchify Tunisia. And in the language section, Geography Psara briefly mentioned how Arabs have this thing called Arabizi. It's like their text language and Tunisians kind of use it a lot in which they use the Latin alphabet and they use numbers to signify letters in the Arabic alphabet that don't have a French equivalent. So it's like nine is qa and three is I can't pronounce that very ah, 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 too hard for me. So that's about it. If there's anything else I forgot to mention, please put it in the comments. Otherwise, we gotta move on. So without further ado. <laughs> Oh yeah, I forgot to say, uh, get your Geography Now merch at geographynow.com. It's not selling out if it's your brand. <sniffs> Nothing in here, just fake sipping for the camera. I'm gonna put this down. Ah, Tunisia, the land of Carthage. And since I have North African roots, that means technically I could be related to Hannibal, but then technically I'm also related to Scipio Africanus Barbatus, who defeated Hannibal. So I'm basically the ancestor of enemy ancestors that killed each other. I shouldn't exist. Ha! <laughs> In any case, we're getting off topic. Let's talk about the flag. So this is a very short and simple one. The flag is a red banner with an emblem made of a white disc in the center with a red crescent and star in the middle of said disc. The crescent and star obviously stand for Islam, the state religion. The white disc symbolizes peace, whereas the red of the flag stands for... Thank you, Potts, our favorite Irishman, for making that animation. I just told him, somehow put an octopus in there because, you know, Tunisia loves seafood. So, you know, throughout history, Tunisia has been under a bunch of other flags. When they're under French protectorate status, they still use their own flag, but sometimes there's the French tricolor in the corner. Otherwise, prior to this, they were under a bunch of other sultanates, kingdoms, dynasties, and caliphates. During Ottoman times, they were under the Bay of Tunis, which was like a bay is, was like a noble ruler within the Ottoman stuff. I don't know, the flag was cool. It had a bunch of colors and like a double dagger thing. I'm not going to go into detail for everyone. It's going to take too long and plus blah blah blah. You get the point. I'd be shocked if any of you guys are even still watching. Anyway, let's move on to the coat of arms. The coat of arms is quite more detailed than the flag. A yellow shield with lots of imagery. On top of the shield is the central emblem of the national flag, obviously standing for Tunisia. In the top center of the shield is a Punic galley, an ancient ship that not only alludes to their ancient Punic roots, but is also considered a symbol of freedom. On the bottom right is a lion holding a sword, which symbolizes order. On the bottom left is a weighing scale which symbolizes justice and in the center just under the ship is the three word national motto written in Arabic freedom order and justice and prior to this they had like three other former coat of arms when they're under the Hussein dynasty and the Bay of Tunis and uh yeah that is uh that's just about it short sweet and simple and spicy just like their harissa still got the can Sammy I gotta open this up and try it sometime soon harissa all right that means you know what time it is it's time for geography fan mail time oh welcome back everybody as you know we always have to have a guest star and today it's gonna be my mom hello everybody i'm back she's back no matter you like her or not i'm here because <laughs> right. i love talk with you guys <laughs> for sure uh all right mom you know how to do this we've done it many times postcards and letters i'll go first all right go ahead hey paul it's alex i now came back from prague your videos really inspire me uh prague is the most underrated city in europe what are your views on the california high-speed railway system that is 
currently built. I mean, that sounds really good. Uh, let's just hope it becomes very uh, useful to the public. <laughs> Maybe I'm gonna just re read a random. Sure. Micah. Micah from Virginia. Have been watching since the San Marino episode. I am very interested in uh, geography and I love to show my favorite episode is Little Liechtenstein. We went there. Yes, we did it. <laughs> I recently visited Iceland. Okay, I'm sorry. And it was wonderful. We went to Greenland, which was also in the Arctic, close. Not far away from there, right? Not far, yeah. Yeah, how did you like Greenland? Oh, fantastic. Uh, yeah, I love to visit there. I don't think I can live there. <laughs> no, I don't. Too cold. I can see ice and yeah. the July. Thank you, Nanook for inviting us. Hi. <laughs> Dear Paul and the GN crew, uh, I present to you a postcard from Salamanca, Spain. Your videos for my, I can't read that, sorry. <laughs> something and I, oh, helpful. And I enjoyed something them. I hope you go to the Caribbean next. I look, I can't read the rest, sorry. I think your name is Ian. Thank you, Ian. Uh, it's my turn. <laughs> my friends, Gaston, wants to thank you but i think he's a bit shy i got him a, a drc shirt from ruba ruba so please say something awesome in french for him <laughs> eric eric okay you want me to say something in french um uh j'espère que ton ami uh aime le t-shirt que tu lui as acheté by the way uh mom and i are gonna go to uh <laughs> we're gonna do a lot of traveling we we're doing four things mom are you ready uh my brain is kind of confusing <laughs> David, uh, dear Barb's, I've been subscribed for years. I'm a Florida man like Keith. Woo! These days, I'm rocking and rolling in the Chicago suburbs. Uh, I've learned so much on your channel, and thank you for all your hard work. Hello, Barb, and the whole GN crew. My name is uh, Nils, and today I was visiting San Marino. I'm visiting in the uh, moment small states uh, like Slova, Slovenia, and then San Marino. One is the most <laughs> kind of difficult for visiting Europe is a uh, walk, walk too much. You're always walking. And uh, then there's no elevator, <laughs> no escalator. You have to just kind of suffer yourself. You have to suffer. <laughs> uh, hey guys, you read my postcard from Interlochen on the Togo episode. Oh, okay. I was so excited. I wanted to share another. This is a chapel on the Stuckspitze, the highest point in Germany. You must go. Lauren from Orange County. Oh, you're my neighbor, but you went to Stuckspitze, Germany. That's beautiful. My name is Will, and I was at work on Alcatraz. <laughs> I have to twist my tongue. <laughs> Your video helped me get getting to learning about the different cultures. You want to open packages now? Yeah, let's do that. Okay. So this is like the jankiest package we've ever gotten. Someone wrapped this up in a Walmart grocery bag. <laughs> this is from Potsdam, New York. Potsdam, New York. Oh, I can tell New Yorker. And inside, they oh sent God. they sent something, but it, they put it in a pasta box. <laughs> Wow. You really are a New Yorker. <laughs> no offense, I'm kidding, kind of. They don't have the kind of time to yeah. go shopping, they, uh, keep rat. <laughs> yeah, they're just, I'm just gonna use whatever I have in my house. He sent uh, these two things. The letter says, this is Christopher from Potsdam, New York. These are products from the Purple Rice Asian Food Market in Potsdam Food Co-op. Can you please express support for these businesses since they've been hurt by the pandemic? Purple Rice Asian Food Market in Potsdam Food Co-op. Go to them if you are in the Potsdam, New York area they have cool candies and snacks thank you Christopher from Potsdam New York thumbs up candy bar golden rice crackers so guys I try to avoid soy in my diet does this have soy in it cocoa powder salt sunflower uh, no soy in this one yeah you can try a little bit just take a bite <laughs> wow that's inside is crunchy Oh, oh, it's like a Butterfinger bar. He's gonna love this. If you give to him, then he's gonna put in the Keith whole thing in his mouth. <laughs> yeah, Keith, I uh, wish you were here. Oh, like this, cute. Little rice snack. We have it like this in Korea. Hello, Geography. Now, Tim, I'm Akin. Uh, we love your video and tune in every week. We are excited for the UK episode. My dad is from uh, Scotland. My mom is, is from England because <laughs> England and Scotland, oh, yeah, boy, just confuse things even more. I was born in the um, Cayman Island. The box are cheese twist, twister and a snack for when 
I went to Mar Malta. We went to Malta. Uh, some Scottish uh, tablet, which is um, really just sugar and fat. <laughs> and uh, more sugar and fat. I gotta try this Scottish tablet. He says it's just sugar and fat. Uh, oh my gosh, look at that. Here, you take a bite and I'll take the rest of it. Okay. Mm. That is very sugary. <laughs> Whoa, like it's all just like sugar, 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 milk, milk, sugar, sugar, sweet and condensed milk, sugar. I feel like I'm biting into a seizure. And you guys think we Americans have fatty foods, like this is sugar overload. So I read this uh, package, it says only open when Noah is the guest on Flag Friday. First of all, these episodes are not only on Fridays anymore, but I actually texted Noah and he said is it, it is okay for me to open this and I will refilm him when he's a guest and give him what is in this box. First of all, this is from Worcester, Massachusetts. Worcester, I don't know how to pronounce it. I think it's Worcester, but it's written like Worcester. Long time viewer, first time writer. I've been following your channel since Ethiopia. At the time, I was taking a class on Sub-Saharan African art history. If you're ever in Massachusetts, feel free to contact me. I can show a bit of my home. Worcester, usually pronounced Wista or Wooster. I knew it! Wooster, Wooster. Now, in the parcel I sent you first, I specified the package. I wanted Noah to be there because I have two items here. Noah, as a fellow comic book nerd, I felt you would like this. Uh, he is a fan of Thor comics and thought he might, this might appeal to him. Superhero. I mean, cartoon? Yeah, that's his, like, favorite superhero. <laughs> so, I will get this to Noah. I'm gonna film Noah uh, getting this in the next uh, time he's on Fan Fridays. Barbs, before you open your bag, I have to tell you a little about the symbol of the city of Worcester, the Burnside Fountain and its bronze casting called the Boy with a Turtle. Joe from the Land of the Turtle Boy. Yep, you got the right size. Men's uh, medium or small, either one. It is the Boy with the Turtle Fountain. So there you go, the Boy with the Turtle. Okay, you know... Open this one. You do it. So this is actually from my friend, Daryl from New York. And he was actually in the 3 million subscriber video. Daryl, what did you send? Oh, a globe. How appropriate. No letter? Uh, he doesn't need a letter. Daryl is just Daryl. <laughs> Daryl. You can always just know what he's saying. Oh, it's an older globe. It doesn't even have South Sudan. Oh, okay. DRC is still called Kong, uh, Zaire. Well, Daryl, thank you for the uh, vintage globe. Uh, hope you're doing well in New York. We haven't seen you long time. You have a chance to stop by here. I'll make something you like it, you know. Well, uh, mom, that's the episode. Anything you want to say to my subscribers? Uh, thanks for watching and uh, nice talking with you guys. See you next time. See you next time. Stay cool, stay tuned. Man, that stuff was so sweet. Ugh.